beginners and I'm Martin and today we're going to do a, another guide. Uh, on this particular guide is that um, this actually scares a lot of people and the reason why it's scaring a lot of people is that for the guys who are Newtonian uh, reflector owners is clean those mirrors. Now time for the time they get dusty it's just how it way it is. That's the problem with the, the Newtonian reflectors is that they collect dust time after time. So today's guide, I'm going to show you a step-by-step, -step, in slow time, demonstration on how to clean your, your secondary mirror and your primary mirror. Now, obviously this scares a lot of people, but the one key factor is, no matter how daunting it is, because you, this, this process is like risking, if you damage the optics, you will damage it, alright? So, best number one advice to give you guys out is take your time, alright? Prep your equipment you're going to use, which I will demonstrate, and take your time, alright? Ideal conditions is do it, is keep it away from dogs and your pets and all that, and make sure your children are around if possible. Alright, so do it at a time where it's the quietest time you can do it. Alright, so it's away from disturbances, you're not getting rushed. Alright, good time to do it is when the weather's bad. And obviously, now past a couple of days now, it's just gone back to cloudy weather. This is the ideal time to do it. At least get your, your, your telescope prepped up, ready for action. However, the um, reason why uh, you've got clean your optics is that after time to time is that dust or dirt particles will get on the main mirror and what it does is it lowers the image quality so obviously it makes it not as bright um, obviously you're looking at planets or something like that and it, it just looks dull or you actually see physically see like uh, speckle, speckles of dust on the image or uh, the view you're looking at so the key is just you kind of have to clean it for your guys and Newtonian reflector owners. Uh, one thing I need to stress out is do not get and do not make that mistake, well a lot of people make mistake, do not clean, over clean your, your reflector, alright? It sounds stupid, alright, but believe me, do not over clean it. And the reason why I say that is you're going to get dust anyway, alright? A couple of months, as soon as you clean it, you're going to expect some dust somewhere, alright? One key factor is, when you're not using the, uh, the Newtonian, always cover up, put the lens caps back on, and the, obviously the mirror caps, when not in use. Alright, so get the habit of putting them in place when not in use. However, with the Newtonian reflector, the one I've got, I'm actually going to demonstrate is a 12 inch reflector. It's quite a big, big mirror. Alright, so, but the thing is, Despite how big it is, it's still going to be the same sort of mirror you're going to clean for your 6 inch or 8 inch reflector and so forth. Alright, it doesn't matter about the size of the mirror, you just got to be careful. Also, as I literally don't over clean mirrors, is that I'm talking 2 to 3 years. Alright, do not even attempt to just try and clean out a mirror within a year. Alright, provided you put the dust caps on every time you're not using it, it's fine, all right? That's, that's how easy it is. But when it is need, to, to need cleaning, all right, we're talking two to three years. Now, believe it or not, this 12-inch reflector that I've got, the uh, Dobsonian, is, um, hasn't been cleaned for four and a half years. So that's how long I've cleaned this mirror, all right? So this is the first clean overall for me. Now, a good rule for me is that don't get obsessively clean. As soon as you shine a torch or something and then you start seeing speckles of dust and that, it disarms you. You're always going to get dust on a reflector, regardless. Because it's an open tube uh, design, you, you, it doesn't matter how much you can try and cover it up, it, it will start to get there sooner or later, alright, time after time. So don't get too obsessive, alright. So, and one key thing is when you start to undertake this job, Make sure you're prep, pre prepped up, away from disturbances, and the most important thing, take your time. As soon as you take your time, you're fine, alright? It's so easy. 
So obviously this guy is going to help you in a big way for you Newtonian owners out there, right? And we're going to disassemble the equipment. Before we do that, we're going to show you a list of items what you're going to need for the job. This is the tools you're going to need. First off is you're going to need a good quality screwdriver, all right? A good Phillips screwdriver. Get the ones that will fit onto the screws properly, all right? Basically, you're going to need this to take off, off the, the primary mirror out of the tube and expose it. Then you're going to need some sort of a soft surface because when you're going to lie the mirror or the tube, you're going to need to make sure that you're going to put something to protect on the floor when you're doing it. Now, obviously, it just depends on the size of the scope, but the, obviously, my big 12 inch reflector is a bit of a beast. So, obviously, I'm going to lay this um, sheeting on the floor so that once I take uh, lay the tube on there it's going to risk damage the dust and and, and, and so forth trying uh, to try and get on the mirror and all that so I'm going to put a sort of clean surface now I can't really um, use this item basically it's a little plastic container now this is around about just slightly over 10 inches all right but basically, um, the whole idea is that you're going to need to put the mirror into a container and let it soak. So basically, you're going to put the mirror in there and let it soak in some water solution and, 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 and washing up liquid. But obviously, because my mirror is 12 inch, it's quite a large mirror. So I'm going to have to use it in my own bath. All right. But this is basically what sort of thing you're looking at. This will probably house an 8 inch or 6 inch reflector easily. All right. Okay, good old trusty um, fairy liquid. All right, this is going to be your cleaning solution. All right, it's going to clean all the grease and dirt and art on the mirror. All right, use high quality uh, washing up liquid. Don't use the cheap stuff because with cheap stuff, there are all cheap chemicals and additives in there which might affect the coatings. But you could use a good quality fairy liquid. All right, and it's not hard loss. You know. You're going to wash your pots anyway with it. <laughs> right. Moving on. Now, obviously, you're going to need um, some very good quality uh, cotton wool. All right. Find, if you can find surgical uh, cotton wool, even better, because this is less abrasive. But use a very good, high quality cotton wool. All right. Cost probably two or three quid for a good set, but this will last for years, all right. And obviously, I clean my uh, eight-inch reflector with this. That's how you, know, you don't need a massive box pack, but use good quality cotton wool. And then, last off, um, if you go to Halfords and all that, you, you'll find this. This is basically distilled water, all right. This is going to be the last bit of cleaning you're going to use on your main mirror. All right, use good quality distilled water. All right, the reason why we're using distilled water is what I'll explain later on. This is my trusty 12 inch uh, Dobsonian Sky Watcher 12 inch. All right, she's a big beast. All right, and uh, she's very heavy as well 60 kilos, in fact. All right, but it's a go to system and fantastic visual scope without a doubt. However, she's going to need uh, the mirrors to be cleaned. All right. So we also remove the dust caps. Now you'll be thinking, well, that looks uh, doesn't look bad at all. In fact, it doesn't. But I haven't cleaned it for for four, four and a half years, so it's going to need some sort of cleaning. All right, and we're going to show you now. This is what a lot of guys do. The biggest mistake is shining the mirror. You know, as soon as they have the, uh, the scope. Now, this is the main mirror. As you can see, you can see the speckles of dust. It's quite a dirty, all right, it's quite a dirty mirror, really. And you can see all that speckles of dust, all right. That hasn't been cleaned for four and a half years, all right. And obviously, she, she definitely needs it. Now, to you guys that just got a Dobsonian, do not fall into the category of trying to clean the mirror once every year or once every time it's dusty don't do that because too much cleaning can also remove the uh, the coatings so do this 
once every two to three years. All right, I mean, and once you've know, done the three years, you, you can do it again and so forth. I, I believe up to about four or five uh, washes is probably more before the, the, the coatings in the mirror needs to be recoated. All right, so uh, this is its first, um, first wash. All right, it definitely needs it. All right, it's incredibly dusty. But four and a half years is not bad really, and it has been used, all right? But it will get there, dust will get there, all right? So what you're going to do is we're going to take that out, all right? There's cobwebs in there as well and so forth, all right? So it definitely needs it. So uh, we're going to take, it, take the tube off, and we're going to take the primary mirror out. First off you're going to do is make sure... Before you take uh, the mirror part, make sure you take all your attachments, like your, your finder scopes. Now, because it's, uh, I use large eyepieces on this telescope, I'm going to need to take off the uh, counterweight at the back. All right. So if you're using large eyepieces, take off any counterweights from the back that you do not wish to use. All right. This is my counterweight system. Uh, unscrew this. Okay. Counterweights off. I'm sure I have no attachments left. Right, basically now what we're going to do is uh, off the mount, alright, off the Dobsonian mount, alright, and basically lay that, uh, the blanket, along the floor so I can lay the tube back on there, alright, so it doesn't damage the tube and all that as I remove the, the main mirror and the secondary mirror. Alright, first off we're going to do is we're going to use a cross point screwdriver okay so we're going to use a cross point screwdriver to take off the screws mounting the the mirror cell okay there's also another reason why we lay it on the floor is that when you're taking particularly the the secondary mirror all right i mean you could in theory do this on the mount uh, on the actual dobsonian mount but believe me don't just take it apart it'd be easier in the long run now the reason why we lay it on its fl flat on like that, on, on its side, is that if you drop any screwdrivers or bolts or any screws that you unloosen, it's not going to go down straight down to the primary tube and hit the mirror mirror. Alright, that's, that's the reason why we put it on its side. Alright, so that's if you if you're guys are wondering. Alright, do not cut corners, take your time and you can't go wrong. You can see is that uh, as you see here it's, it's mounted with these screws basically you're going to go around each side all right and you're going to take out these screws using the good quality Phillips screwdriver all right so you're going to take off the main mirror so take these bolts all right nice and easy all right put them in a safe place so you don't lose them Alright, so just keep, I'm going to keep going along here. Right, well this one's probably looks like it's got six of these screws. Alright, just put them in a nice safe place. You may need to tilt the mirror on its side to get access to the to the bolts, not to these screws. The screws. Alright, so she's nice and loose, and basically I'm going to pop the, the mirror out carefully, nice and easy. Alright, nice and easy. And there you go, there's the beast. Alright, as you can see here, there's quite a bit of dust. Alright, she, she weighs around about 10 kilos or something like that, and uh, you can see there's quite a bit of dust. The mirror's in not bad condition, alright, so. Basically what we're going to do now is we're going to take off uh, the screws mounting the mirror cell together. Now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to take off these screws. That's why you need a good quality screwdriver. The reason needs to fit properly so that you don't slip and then catch the, uh, the, the mirror coatings which you don't want. All right. So obviously carefully take out the screws eating it so, so you don't slip 
you probably find that these screws might be locked tighter on the thread all right now what you probably find is when you take these screws out you probably get fragments of this lock tight this thread lock all right do not worry about it okay it will go on the on the coatings but do not touch it or wipe it off basically you're going to take off these screws nice and easy all right holding the bracket on the side carefully do not touch that mirror all right take each one of these screws individually once they're loose just loosen up by your hands nice and easy take off the screws basically these clamps hold the mirror as you can see here you see this loctite here that's on there that's what's that's what's in there basically it's just a rubber um just a rubber clamp all right put them nice and safe now always um don't work over it over the mirror okay just if you get a bit difficult just slide the mirror all the way around all right just with your hands all right and just make it easier for yourself obviously bigger the mirror the more you're gonna uh, you're gonna have to move them quite a bit but obviously work quite near where you're where you're moving your uh, when you've taken off the screws all right this is quite a big mirror all right so make it easy for yourself all right okay moving the last bracket now this main mirror is now loose off its mirror cell so you can see the fragments of this loctite on the main mirror don't worry about it okay right that is now loose okay now because of this it's held inside here is that it's going to be a bit difficult to uh, lift the mirror right depends on the size of the mirror some you can pop it out easy as all, but on this this is a bit difficult so what i found is i'm going to lift the main mirror cell underneath and i'm going to get one of my hands to just push the main mirror up so that i can get uh, access to the uh, underneath all right so i'm going to push it up providing i do not chip it on the side all right and i'm now going to grab both my hands steadily now if you're struggling, get someone else to hand, give you a hand. Alright, and now I'm prising off the main mirror. And then put that on its side, okay, carefully. Alright, that's the main mirror off. You then just remove the mirror cell out of the way. There's no need for that. So take it out of the way so it's easier. There you go. That is the main mirror exposed. Now, if you're having a bit of a heart attack and you're nervous, just chill out, have a smoke, have a fag, or have a brew and just relax. Okay? So that's the main mirror out. Now, depending on your uh, brand of telescope uh, or the size, you, you can usually um, take away the, um, the secondary mirror just by loosening this screw here. Now, if you can't do that, you're going to have to, uh, depending on the telescope, you're going to have to take off these screws at the top here, this one here, all right? Loosen the, the actual mirror veins. Now, these are mir mir mirror veins here, all right? Okay? So, usually, you have to take off this outer ring here, which is held in by a couple of screws all right, on the side of the tube. So, you take that, uh, that out, and then you take the, the, the ring out. Then you just loosen these screws at either end, depends on how many veins you've got, you take them out and then carefully you, you prise the, uh, the, the second mirror out. Obviously for me, I don't have that problem. All I have to do is take off this center uh, screw here. All right. So I loosen the, uh, the, the three screws. Um, ideally, just take them all the way out. Now, you'll be wondering, oh, I've thrown off the, the collimation. Which, yes, you will. You will throw off the collimation regardless. Alright, so don't worry about that. Alright, uh, providing you've got a, uh, a laser collimator and you follow my other guide on collimating the main mirror, it's fine. Now, Don't worry about these three screws, alright? They're not going to fall off. 
because here, once we take them off, is that you've got, there is a, uh, a, a, a fillet screw, mounting screw in the middle. Alright, so basically, alternatively, I'm going to hold the side, do not touch the, the secondary mirror. Alright, I'm just going to hold it with two little fingers and I'm going to take off the actual fillet screw. Right, keep hold of the actual secondary mirror. Right, I'd rather drop the screwdriver than the secondary mirror. So take it out, um, it's, it's under spring tension, so there's a spring in there and, there, and a couple of washers. Right, so you take it out, and then there you go. Take off, slowly take off the secondary mirror and leave the bit in there, right? You don't need to bother about that, which is the spring and a couple of washers. Right, now, obviously, uh, the main, secondary mirror needs uh, cleaning because it's got fragments of dust and crap, all right? So that needs washing as well, right? Put that somewhere safe and obviously, uh, so you're not going to damage the, the... Now, a lot of problem with um, uh, a lot of uh, forums on a lot of YouTube videos is that they do not highlight based on cleaning the primary mirror. Now, that's basically half a job. Now, if you want to um, do the proper job, you're doing it for every two to three years, do the secondary mirror. Now, a lot of YouTube forums and videos do not cover the secondary mirror. That is also equally important. Again, don't do, don't cut, don't cut corners. If you if you're gonna do the job, do it right. All right, and and it'll last for two to three years. All right, so do the job properly in the first place. Now, what's happening now is that both mirrors are off. All right, the tube can now just stay there, and we're now going to take it up. Take the main mirror carefully and the secondary mirror carefully. Um, so I'm going to take it to my uh, uh, bathroom. I'm in my bathroom and uh, basically I've got the primary mirror in my bathroom because the mirror is that big. Alright, and uh, basically what we're going to do now is we're going to wash that mirror. Now, as you see here, I placed some uh, like rubber, like, like foam flan nets. Now you can use a shower mat, and uh, you can lay that across, and then you can put the prime mirror cell. Basically, it's just a precaution, so you don't chip the uh, the actual uh, mirror itself on the side, or catch or catch something like. Obviously, as I mentioned before, make sure you prep your areas. Make sure you've uh, got all. Any items out your uh, your bathroom, you can use this in a kitchen sink. So make sure you tidy up everything and wash out your, your sink or your bath or, or your bath. All right. So first off, what we're going to do, you're going to use a shower head carefully, and then you're going to test. You're going to uh, basically uh, make sure you get your tap setting to uh, like lukewarm. So you need to get it sort of lukewarmish, all right. Doesn't need to be hot, all right. And basically, what you're going to do is you're going to shower the actual mirror nice and easy, like a circular motion, all right. Basically, you're going to loosen up all the particles, all right. That's what you're going to do, all right. Now, obviously, you get underneath. Alright, get underneath the mirror cell without touching the coatings. Alright, right. It just gets rid of the loose step. Blow it down, switch off the tap and the shower. Right, now what you're going to do, and you're going to use a couple of drops of fairy liquid. Alright, so basically, we're going to fill up the bath with. Uh, lukewarm water, okay. We're going to fill her up, and we're going to use a, a couple of a couple of drops of washing up liquid, okay. You don't need you don't need too much. But nice. Uh, basically, we're going to fill up that bath with washing up liquid. 
It's coming in the main mirror. Okay, I'm going to use another pad. I'm going to put the pad on, on, on the water itself. All right. Whilst that's going ahead, we're going to grab the secondary mirror. All right. And we're also going to wash the secondary mirror out. All right. I'm going to pop the secondary mirror in the solution as well. All right. Now, basically, what we're going to do now, we're going to leave it to soak for about half an hour or an hour. Okay. It's late soak. And the reason why we're doing that is if there's any trap dirt on the on the on the coatings itself, on the secondary and the and the primary mirror, then basically what this is doing, this is going to loosen all the dirt and the grime and the grease. Alright, it's going to loosen it up. So basically what we're going to do now, I'm going to wait half an hour or an hour, depending on how you feel. Alright, and then come back later, have a brew, watch something else, have a have a smoke or whatever. Right, basically what we're going to do now is we're going to Drain the bath. Once it's all drained, we then what we're going to do is we're going to test the water out first. Make sure it's all lukewarm, lukewarm water. And then basically what we're going to do is we're going to wash off um, the excess. Okay, of the second mirror. Alright. Pop that back. We're then going to wash off the primary mirror. We're going to lift her up slightly. Alright, and we're just going to circular motion. Okay. And then once we've done that, once we've rinsed it, we're now going to fill her up again, put some more uh, washing up liquid, right it's now filled up and then what we're going to do is we're going to you're going to need your cotton wool pleats basically you're going to grab a bit of cotton wool okay like so all right obviously i have them into hand you're going to grab a piece of cotton wool let that so okay we're going to start off with the secondary mirror being the easiest one all right and what you're going to do is you're going to um, gently stroke the cotton wool across like so all right then throw that piece away again get a little cotton wool all right like so under its own weight you then gently cross that ground like so all right and throw that piece away all right that's basically what we're doing there for the secondary mirror and then what you do is just wash that off then you then get semi distilled water all right here's your distilled water and then basically you're going to pour so that water across the the secondary mirror all right reason why we're using uh, distilled water is that it doesn't have additives or minerals and all that okay and basically that will leave basically you're going to leave that to dry all right and it's not going to form water marks all right obviously now you're going to get spatches of you know, I guess with all the water marks on there all right and basically we're going to pull that at the one corner, leave that to dry out like so. Alright, so now we've got it resting on there. Alright, and just leave that to dry. Choose a piece of towel off kitchen roll. Alright, and if you've got any water marks, stubborn uh, water marks, 
just do a quick dab all right soak up all the loose droplets all right even on the corner all right bit leave it alone don't touch it let it just dry out to its own accord all right and you're going to do the same yeah. process again all right now because the mirror is quite heavy carefully and i mean carefully get some cotton wool dab it with some solution and again do the same process nice and easy under its own weight okay do the same again go across one way and then bend that piece do the same again under its own weight bend that piece Keep doing it until you've done all the surface of the mirror. Do that a bit. And there you go. Alright. How easy is that? Quick. And then what you're going to do now, empty the solution off there. And we're going to rinse the mirror out again. Alright. Rinse it all out. on the floor like so on the base of the bath and basically you're going to put this mirror at an angle do the same again get your distilled water and you're just going to wash the mirror out leave it to dry same detail use a corner of the kitchen towel and just dab all the water marks all right now the distilled water should not form these spot marks all right but as a precaution just dab it along all right carefully once you've got all the water marks out the way, all right? Just let it soak in there, all right? As you can see now, the mirror looks really, really clean, all right? Leave it for about half an hour to it to okay. dry out. What we're going to do now is, whilst we wait for the mirror to uh, dry, you're going to use a, a damp uh, flannelet, okay? Make sure it's only damp, not pouring with water. So rinse it out so it's just a damp, right? And basically what we're going to do is go underneath, uh, go in the tube and clean out all the dust. All, right. all the tube, right? Gets rid of all the excessive amount of dust in there. Okay? So you're just going to brush it all that dust out and the crap so it doesn't fall back onto your nice clean mirror. Basically I'm going to fit the secondary mirror first, right? There's no exact order you want to put it in place all right you can either put the primary in or the secondary mirror in either way it suits you looking really nice and clean um obviously if you do get watermarks now don't worry about it if you do get a lot of more if you do get some watermarks that you've missed don't worry about it all right just don't touch it it's not going to degrade the performance of the scope all right just leave it all right you can wash it out if you wish with more distilled water but don't worry about it but that's the reason why we use distilled water to minimize this water marks and all that which you do get additives in the um, in the actual uh, tap water itself so that's why we use distilled water now also if you could put it back in if you do get a few speckles and it does happen if you do get a few speckles of um, dust right leave it don't touch the uh, you know because it does happen we do get dust everywhere Alternatively, once the mirror's dried, use a blower brush, all right, and just quickly, just quick blow, quick blow of the any, any lint or dust or all that, all right. Once that's that, we then go over. In the mirror, all right. There's no either or that you can do it. Just bear in mind that you put it exactly where you have it. 
Now don't worry about collimation, all right? Don't worry about collimation issues, okay? Basically you want to fix that secondary mirror back in there. Quick tip I have noticed that if you are putting the second mirror in, you see little indentations and all that of where the screws were actually were. That gives you an indication where, what the position of the mirror should be. Alright, so you just tighten it up. Okay, that's that secured. We're going to put the, um, the collimation screws back in. Okay, putting the collimation screws. Right, that's that in place. Um, and also now we're going to put the, the cap back on, all right, to stop any inner dust coming in. Now we've got the, the primary the primary mirror cleaned. We're now going to put it back into the, its, its own mirror cell. All right. And we now place this over the mirror cell, nice and easy. Okay. That's it. It's in the mirror cell. Okay. Still any dust particles? Blow it off. Okay. Like so. And we're going to place these clamps. Now, one thing to be careful of: don't over tighten these clamps. They need to be tight, but basically they just should be, you know, tight as you can. You know, tight, but not too tight, right? Because basically it needs to. Um, there's supposed to be a natural gap between these clamps. So obviously, make sure you put these nice and easy. All right. It's best to fit the uh, line up the bolts first in the holes. All right. Okay. Okay. Slide them around. And then so, put these clamps back in. Nice and easy. Basically, we're now going to tighten them up. Obviously, don't over tighten them because it's supposed to be a natural gap. To, uh, to allow the mirror to expand and all that. So now that should be all secured. Okay? It's all secured. So what you're going to do is then you're going to put it back into the mirror cell, but also do a quick do a quick uh, You're now going to put it back into the main telescope tube carefully. Then get your little screws, position the screws first. Just make sure all the screws are in. Tighten them up. Tight. That's it. That's the the, the, the risky bit now out of the way. Basically now your mirror is now secure into the mirror cell and it's in the tube right okay that's basically now the the primary mirror and the secondary mirror in place all right um, what will happen now is that now you will collimate the mirrors using a laser collimator. Now I'm not going to go into this uh, guide because it's already featured in another guide so there's no point in me going through this process again. All right. So basically um, just assuming that they're now being collimated okay, and I'm happy that, it's, that the red dot is now lined up in the primary mirrors uh, reticle 
and obviously it's lined up with the collimator sets uh, bullseye. Basically, uh, I'm going to put back in, uh, into put the shroud back on. All right. Now, one thing I need to cover is that a lot of the uh, a lot of the stuff on YouTube don't don't actually cover this. All right, it's very hard to find. Um, basically, um, when you're um, say like you finish observer session at the, uh, the telescope away is always place the tube or on a horizontal position like that. Now the reason why uh, we, we, I say this is that if you are packing it away, guess what happens? Never ever put uh, your telescope tube upwards like that because basically what you're doing is you're making a, um, a dust trap for your reflector. So basically what's going to happen is going to settle it's going to settle all the dust into the main mirror which you just cleaned, right? Now that main mirror is now clean for another two to three years, all right, depending on how long you use it for, all right? You don't need to bother this for two to three years. However, to minimize the dust, when you stop using the session, all right, always pop the telescope tube into the horizontal position, all right? Keeps the dust off. Then put your dust caps on, all right? even the dust caps on the eyepiece holder as well that to, to reduce the dust further all right is now as you can see here there's gaps here where the the mirror where dust can actually get in from that side all right so the quick tip is get yourself some of these all right now it depends on the size of the mirror all right These are basically uh, shower caps. So basically, you get it from a beauty salon or something like that, or go to um, any uh, sh uh, supermarket or whatever. Get yourself some of these, and basically, what they do is they just cover this um, mirror cell up. So basically, it will stop uh, dust from getting in. However, because this telescope is a bit of a beast, um, I basically I just need something a bit bigger. You can get some of these from a lot of telescope shops. All right. Basically, it's a uh, it's a it's a cloth uh, sort of dust cap. All right, and it just fits over to the mirror cell by itself. All right. And uh, believe it or not, that will prevent a lot of dust from getting into from the other side. All right. Um, what I have noticed is if you keep this on after you're collimated and you're using an observing session, if you keep this on, it will also try and prevent dew forming on the, the primary mirror as well. All right, stops the old cold air getting in, so it actually helps it to keep dew off as well. All right, to a certain degree, keeps all stops your primary mirror from uh, um, basically fogging up and then ruining your session. All right, and that's basically. Um, the telescope prep the storage, right? So obviously, just leave it. Dust caps are on. Making sure you, your your dust caps on the this side is on, and uh, making sure it's in horizontal position. All right, and this will help keep the uh, the reflector dust free to a certain degree for about maybe two to three years. In fact, probably more. All right, so. The longer, the, the better you, you look after it, the less of their stuff. But bear in mind, all right, every time you clean your no on your reflector, it's usually around about two to three years. Uh, four year, four and a half, even better, all right? Don't get, get in the habit of doing too much cleaning, all right? Clean it when it's only necessary, all right? So this will apply to a lot of new on your reflectors, all right? And it is good practice. I hope that this guide has helped you a great deal, all right? Um, obviously, please attempt it. Do not be afraid to uh, not do it, okay? Because sometimes not doing it is not always a good idea, all right? But what this has done is it helps the telescope much better. It will perform to its capabilities. And that is now the, uh, the, the complete mirror cleaning complete now. I don't need to worry about this now for a long time. So I hope you guys uh, like this video, 
All right, I hope it's a great use to you. Um, please feel to ask any questions on astronomy for beginners. All right, and uh, thanks for all for watching and clear skies.